<laughs> right, what I'm going to do then is share my screen with you. Mm -hmm. And do you have Parish Online available yourself? Yes, yes. Yeah. Up and running is what I meant. So if mm -hmm. I start... for you to have so that you can play with it. Um, I think, um, no, 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 keep, keep it there, but yeah, we can. Okay. Because you'll be... Hopefully you can now see on. me logging in. Go on, you can say yes. Yes, we can. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't. We didn't actually hear that. Yeah. All right. So you know, it always starts up in your own parish, and the parish boundaries, the blue lights, mm -hmm. are always on. The right-hand side is the digital map of the UK, courtesy of the Ordnance Survey, and it's a really high-quality map. You can get into tremendous detail. And on the left-hand side is a column of collections of layers and the layers are all organized into collections usually based upon whom they've been provided by and uh the boundaries at the moment are what i usually use just to show you how they work so if we go down to the boundaries here and scroll down you'll see there's a tick opposite the parish and if i just mm -hmm. tick again they turn off so any layer you turn on or off just by clicking in it um, and then the layers are all mostly provided by third parties, so people like the Environment Agency, the Land Registry, Historic England, and so forth. And I know you'll be really interested in the Coal Authority. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but there's also the opportunity to um, create your own layers in what are known as parish layers. And there's also the Asset Register, which is a pre structured database, if you will, of all the things that most parishes or town councils are likely to want to keep track of. So they'll think be things like playgrounds, um, grip boxes, defibrillators, those sorts of things. So we'll get into all of those uh, shortly. But to... Sorry, can I just ask you, Graham, are you saying that those things are already uh, if we went into that layer, it would already populate automatically or we need to uh, what, what's there is the infrastructure. So if I go into Asset Register and I click yeah. on buildings, um, we've got a couple of buildings. But if you oh, then I say, okay. I want to add a new record, which is called Add a Feature, you'll see that the, the, what you need to put in here is already here. And because this is uh, available across the country, you cannot make changes to the Asset Register in terms of its structure. So you can make changes, of course, to whatever the actual data is that you put in there, the values and the dates and the things like that. But the structure of what's there is unchangeable. So if you're, you've got something that you want to record, which is not already in the asset register, then we create that as a new layer in the parish layers. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to take a bit of refreshment. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> So um, just in case you're not familiar with how these things work, so I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and let's turn off this buildings and just show you. I'm in the a part of Somerset, which is called the Levels, which is, uh, has a great tendency to flood in uh, wet weather. And if I type in flood at the top, and what I did was click on the little magnifying glass at the top of the columns. Um, mm -hmm. It tells me where I can find anything to do with flooding. So I'll go down to the Environment Agency and say, please show me what happens for a Zone 3 flooding. So I tick that and it thinks away to itself because all of Parish Online is up in the cloud. So you're downloading stuff from the Internet. But now you can see how much of Somerset disappears underwater when it rains. So this is very helpful to people who are trying to plan where they're going to build houses and so forth because they may say this is the most gorgeous spot and you can say well, actually it is at the moment but it disappears underwater when it rains so you don't want to build there <laughs> and you can do you can put multiple layers in place at once so for a planning application you might say show me the local conservation areas show me the tree preservation orders show me the sites of scientific interest all the reasons why you might not want to permit a planning application to go ahead. So you can put in multiple layers at one time, which is, is very helpful. And they all sit on top of each other. They just look like one picture on the top. Okay. 
So let me shut this one down. Let me shut that one down. So we're back to this. Now, the green collection at the top tend to do with the actual map itself. So mm. underneath the Ordnance Survey, um, you get the various standards that you can have. So this at the moment is the, the, the default one. But if we decided, usually if we go in a little bit further, it makes more sense. So if we go in a little bit more detail, and as you go in, the detail gets greater. So you start seeing house names, you start seeing road names and stuff. But then if I say, rather than the standard, show me the gray scale. So you notice all the color disappears, which can be very handy if you're doing a printout of anything and you don't have a color printer, for instance, which I can't believe anyone has that nowadays, but it's still, <laughs> the, the principle is there. Or you can go for straight white, uh, which is even less detail, but again, depending on what you're doing, but the, the whole point is to show you that you can change what it is that you're looking at. Uh, this is the default. And then what's even more fun, I don't know if you've played with the photography yet, but you can say this is all very well, but it's much more fun to see it as a photograph <laughs> so than on the overhead photography. And this takes a little bit of time to download because there's lots and lots of pixels coming down, as you can imagine. Um, but the point I want to show you about this is that you can vary how much of you see is photograph and how much is map. So it's, it's nearly there. There we go. If you go back up here to here where we selected the map, you can now right click on this little cogwheel and it shows you a filter. And if I go over here, it says this is what 100% map looks like. If I go down to zero, it's what 100% photography looks like. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Isn't that <laughs> that's neat? And then for what yeah. I want, it can be handy to have something in between the two. So you get the names beginning to show up and you get so you can orientate yourself where you are with the map and then when you're really mm. happy where you are you turn the the map off and just get plain photograph and again the detail here is astonishing you can go down to um, the level where you can start counting trees so if you've got uh, tree preservation orders and you want to actually mark them where they are you can pick out the individual trees it takes a little while again you're bringing down a lot more data from the internet but it'll suddenly click into sharp focus focus mm -hmm. um if you give it enough time or if you're in a, an office with a huge bandwidth and then you're in great shape are you in an office or are you operating out of a home office at the moment in an office oh, in an office okay you yeah. see how the details suddenly clicked in you can now see you know the individual tractor tire marks that's amazing isn't it fascinating? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, and there are all sorts of times to use uh, the photography, which we'll get into later. And mm -hmm. the photograph moves with the map. So if you say, um, I actually don't want to be here, I want to be there. And you say, now I've got, I've got myself lost. I don't know where I am. So I'll pick out, sorry, on the map. I want to be a bit more map. Oh, yes, it's that pond I'm interested in. So you can turn the map down again. And once the photography catches up, you'll see that the pond is, is right there. Mm. It looks like I've got a slow day for the internet. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, anyway, this is so helpful. You can, isn't it? Yeah, you can take the point. So mm -hmm. one of the things that people like to know about when they're in um, councils and so forth is the distances between places or the areas of places. And mm -hmm. rather than we wait for this picture, I'm going to turn this off, come back to the picture only. Sometimes when you're, the system is downloading photo photographs, it gets lost. You get this lovely blank screen, which means nothing. Uh, and was that because I turned the pictures off? Yes. So let's go to there. Um, so if we say just how big is this field, um, which may be important for uh, rent purposes or whatever, particularly if it's allotments. You can go mm -hmm. up to tools up here and say, I want to measure. And then it says, do you want to measure a length or do you want to measure an area? And in this case, we're going to measure an area. So it says, okay, go ahead. If you move your mouse, you'll see it now changes to a crosshairs rather than an arrow. Mm -hmm. You can start at any point where you want to start measuring and just click once and then you pull the mouse down. I haven't got anything pressed now, I'm just pulling the mouse. Mm -hmm. And we'll just say, I'm going to here, 
Then I click again so I can change direction. And now I can go down to here and I click again. I can change direction up to there and up to there and up to there and up to there and up to there. And if I double click now, and it says you've got 1,376 square meters, which can be very useful. Or if you'd rather know how far is it from the caravan site to the nearest building, you can just say, I want to measure length. And you'll go from the caravan site up to the building. And you know it's, if you double click, it's 11, oh, <laughs> 11 rods. <laughs> <laughs> if you happen to be operating in Imperial, you can change the measurement to uh, put it in, um, uh, in other units if you want to. Mm -hmm. okay, you can put the lengths in nanometers. If you're really keen to know how many kilometers it is from there to there, now you know it's less than 0 0.006. So that's tools for measurement. Let's turn that off. So we'll say we're done with that. Thank you. Clear all and yes, delete everything. So we're now going to get into the sorts of things that you can do with the various columns. So this is we're still dealing with third party columns and information at the moment. So if I say here is a village, can't even remember which one this is, this is now. Looks like mine. Ha ha. <laughs> uh, it may be very useful to know what the address of every house is. So you can come down to uh, if I get myself to work. Come down here. There we go. Come down to addresses. Turn on the addresses. And now every red dot is an address. And if you click on any dot. This is called location-based data. So when you want to know something about something, you just click on it. So I'm just going to click on this red dot here. And the left column changes to the data record. And you're given mm -hmm. the address and the postal code um, and a lot of other information, which is really of not much use to you. But um, it's nice to have the address. So if you can imagine you're responsible for helping people out during COVID-19 and those people who are housebound aren't allowed to go and collect their medicines. Um, you might color code them all yellow and all the people who are volunteering to help, you might color code them green. And then it's a piece of mm -hmm. cake to match any yellow dot to the nearest green dot. And you can say, well, the person helping you is such and such. And they come in, you know, twice a day or whatever it is, or they phone you up and say, I'm about to go shopping. What do you need? Have you got three eggs or, or whatever <laughs> the issue is? So that was an address there I turned on. Um, and again, we'll say that's been very useful. Thank you. But we'll turn it off. I should say you can export all this information, anything that's in Parish Online, you can export. So if you say, for instance, let's just do an annotate. I want to know all the addresses in this area. So I'm going to collect a circle. All right, I'm just going to say, draw a circle there. And I want to know all the addresses in that area. So I go down to the address list. And I click table view. And now here are all the addresses uh, in that circle. Now you can just export those down here into a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Into a spreadsheet. And then you can do whatever you like with it. So that uh, principle is true for all of Parish Online. You just um, go down to right click on the layer, up comes table view. And then this pops up. The other great thing about table view, particularly for your own uh, layers where you're trying to change information, you can go in and change any of this data here and it will record it. So if you've created something and then you say everything's got the wrong code number, I put, I've changed my mind how I want to do the coding. You can just come into the table and change all the coding um, right here and there. It's very quick. Uh, the other thing I should mention as we go through is that uh, don't worry about making mistakes because it's very simple to change things, particularly if you're creating your own layer. You create a layer, which we'll do in a second. We create all sorts mm -hmm. of columns of data. 
uh, you work for a week and then you say, we really should have recorded the date on which we do this. So you can go back in and add the date field later and then just come back into the table view and change the dates which are blank to whatever you want them to be. So it's it's not crucial to get everything right first time in, because editing and changing is is a piece of cake. Mm. Okay. Do the layers, if I add layers, would that show up on other people's? Like, is that shared? No, it's, it's, it's it well, just... let me be careful. It's available to anybody in your parish, but mm. nobody outside your parish can see it. So I cannot see any data that you add uh, in Seven Oaks. It's entirely yours um, and yours only. With, I say that there are a couple of exceptions. There are what are called national layers where the information is available to everybody um, across the country because it's of great interest. So one of them is cemeteries. When COVID-19 started, the government suddenly realized that they had no idea that there was enough capacity in the country's graveyards to accept hundreds of thousands of bodies. So they sent out a quick urgent message saying, can you tell us how many bodies, sorry, how many spare <laughs> graves there are in your cemeteries? Um, yeah. And the answer came back very quickly because everybody with Parish Online just filled in the answers. Um, and the same is true of allotments that you can see and make changes to other people's allotments because if the parish next to you hasn't got Parish Online, you can do it for them as a favor. But it's only in those two areas at the moment, cemeteries and allotments, but we expect it to get much um, a wider area, particularly as climate change becomes more and more important. There's a lot of development going on there. OK, so let's go back to the basic map. I just need to move you guys so I can get to the X here. There we go. Let's turn off the annotate. Can, can I just ask him? Um, sorry, Graham, can I just ask you a question? Be my guest. Um, I went on to... <clears throat> oh, go on view, you're on print. I thought I did go to view. Oh, and then what? Bookmarks? I don't know. Legend? I don't know. <laughs> I think she's stuck on one of the print things. I am. <laughs> I went into print when you were showing us... Right. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll unshare my screen. You can share yours. Let me just give you... Oh, no, because I'm not... I'm sh Sorry, I'm on a different laptop. Oh, it's, okay. It's going to be quite an easy thing for you to answer I'm sure when you were showing us the um the aerial data sets I went on to one just to practice while you were talking and then I went on to print and I don't seem to be able to get back to the page that has all of the tabs on the left hand yes, side yeah. so let's, let's just let me go back to sharing my screen I'll show you where I think you are you can tell me if I'm right or not it's just it's a very bad start if I can't move from one screen <laughs> to another. No, print is a, a slight issue. So you can oh. go from here to print. You did you clicked on print here? Well, I didn't in the end. I just thought, okay, I don't want to print anything. Let me get out and I'm stuck here. You stuck so you're here. Okay. It's, yes, but without the bit on the left. <laughs> <laughs> you the column on that. the left isn't there. Is that where you yes. are? Yes. Yes. All right. So up in the top left corner. This is what's called the hamburger icon. Yes. So you can click on the hamburger and you should get the left column back. And then you can just click on the X at the top of the left column. Success. Uh, I'm back to print and now just click X again. X. Ah, success. 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 Thank you. Good. Yes. Thank you very much. And my very keen ear. Did I detect an American accent with you? <laughs> yes, you did. Where are you from? I'm from Florida. Ah, right. Well, I only ask because I spent much of my working life in the States. Um, Whereabouts? And just to keep company with you, I'm actually an American citizen because we adopted a daughter when we were over there and we thought she would like to have another American in the family. So oh, that's... Two, two of us are Americans. We've uh, spent most of the time in Maine, but quite a okay. lot in uh, Pennsylvania and uh, South Jersey. Okay, all but right. We also, we're huge fans of the West Coast. We love Oregon. Um, <laughs> and Florida was, is just absolutely brilliant for Disney World, but that's it. <laughs> the rest of it rest of it's a waste of space. <laughs> I think Disney's lovely, but then I think you need to go um, 
into the water and into the you know do some scuba diving and, and that's yeah sort of yeah well we did spend a little time in um, is it venice and naples down yes. there on the on the west coast of florida mm. Uh, which is very pleasant, but I think I get very bored very quickly. It's very flat. Yes, I think so too. Yes. Right. If you look well, hard. Well, that's enough, why I'm in. That's why I'm in England. <laughs> okay. Yes, quite quite right. Because if you look hard enough from Florida, you can see the North Pole. It's so flat. <laughs> um, well, you can anyway, see Cuba. Let's go back to back from the line. <laughs> anyway, um, so where are we? I think we've got to the point where we want to go into parish layers. So <laughs> parish layers. Um, probably are empty uh, for you but there might be the one or two where you played earlier georgie um yes let me have a quick look so these are things you've created or are already there um yeah there's things that are already Amazing. there so there's there's things like um town council land um where i think someone's already gone and tried red line outlining what we own okay um and um, so what well, since you, you raised the topic let me go into asset register on my screen and you can see down the bottom there is an entry for land so mm -hmm. if the council owns the land you should be entering it here because it's an asset of yours okay, okay? yeah so for instance yeah. i clicked on mine and uh, up here our allotments have clicked on um and if i yeah. go further north there's another set of allotments up here so land is, uh, in theory, belongs in the uh, asset register, unless there's something you want to add about the land that um, there isn't a, a slot for in the uh, the database here, in which case you do create yeah. it as your own layer. <laughs> okay, that's actually really helpful because I've um, been tasked with <laughs> figuring out um, if all of our land is registered on um, HM land registry. Oh, right. Um, oh, right. So I think if if I was to do the red line drawings and everything on the actual land one, because someone's done it on the parish layers can, one. Can get you really excited. Oh, please do. <gasps> so there is a layer called HM Land Registry. And if you turn yes, it on. I think I saw that, but there's not much there. Oh, well, it depends uh, what your scale is. You need to be zoomed quite in quite close. You see now all the land registry has come up. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? So every piece of land that the land registry knows about is outlined in black. And then in the middle, there's a reference number. And you can go on to the land registry mm -hmm. website. Type oh, in my that, gosh. So here's like the vine. Yeah. Type in that reference number and it'll tell you who the owner is. Now, a word of warning, it's Georgie. Um, yes. there, are, there are a miserable bunch of tight-fisted people in the land registry, and every time you ask, you ask for information, they'll charge you um, a couple of pounds or something. And you yes, need to have, figured you that to out. have an account. So um, if, you, if the land ownership is in doubt, or if you don't know if it's the council that's registered as the owner, then that's when you should check. But you can mm. see here exactly which parcel of the land the land registry knows about and if there are any that it doesn't know about then they show up as blank spaces and then that's quite it's very useful mind yeah. you there isn't a lot that they don't know about um, i find it quite confusing how sometimes um i found that they have two different ones so there's like a tt reference number um and then a different one so I've been looking. I don't know. I think I've ever seen one of those, so I don't know what they are. But you can always call them up and ask them, or write them a rude letter. <laughs> yeah. which is what I do. Yeah. <laughs> it, takes, it takes quite a while. I asked a very quick question, and they came back after three or four weeks with about a ten-page answer, which is not really what I wanted. But <laughs> I think they they work on the bureaucratic theory that if you deluge people in facts, so they'll get blinded and forget what they asked in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, I'm sorry, I don't know what TT is, but you can probably yeah, actually, it's... I do know that you can you can ask the land registry website what it means. They've got a, a, oh, yeah, yeah. Of what their symbols are on their website. So let's go back to um, creating your own layer. And do you have something in particular that you're interested in at the moment? 
Maybe we can just do this as a fun example if you happen to have something in mind. Um, do you have anything as in um, the cricket things that you're wanting to look at? By the way, so I should have mentioned at the start of all this, um, we're recording this and if it's helpful, I can send you the video afterwards because sometimes it's quite convenient to go back and see what on earth I was dithering about at the time. <laughs> yeah, that would be really helpful. Um, well, I suppose um, maybe if we could do one on the, um, what's it called, the asset register for land, as this is something that I'll be doing. Okay. Um, in so, the very near future. On the asset register, then we'll click on it. We'll go down to land. And with all these things, they, um, they come up with anything you've already entered. But if there's mm -hmm. nothing already entered, then you just don't see any difference at all. And so what they're asking is uh, add some information. And to add information in Parish Online, you right click anywhere on the layer you've selected. So I've selected the land layer here. If I right click, up pops a mini menu and you want to add a feature. So then it pops up with a blank record and you can start putting in the information that you want to record on this particular place. So there's a red line around category, which means they absolutely do have to have an answer in here. And until you put an answer in there, your save box at the bottom will remain grayed out, so you can't use mm -hmm. it. So they insist on a category, and you can just say, uh, what are we talking about in your case? An other public space? Yeah, that's uh, yeah, public space. Yeah. For you guys, okay. So this is seven oaks test. Description of location, it isn't anywhere. Um, did we purchase it? Of course we did. We bought it yesterday for £10,000. <laughs> and its replacement value as of today is £15,000 because land is shooting up around Seven Oaks. And the last valuation date was today. You don't have to put these answers in. They're only there if, in case you need mm -hmm. them. Most of the... Yes, yeah, I think I likely won't. I likely won't know those. <laughs> the real purpose of the asset register is for insurance purposes. So, you know, when you do your insurance, the first thing the insurance company says, so what do you own? How much are we talking mm -hmm. about? What is the village hall worth? What is the town offices worth? That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So when you think you've filled in all the fields that you want to, you'll notice that the save button at the bottom is still grayed out because it's saying, so where is this thing? Okay, mm -hmm. so we're going to say, what are we doing, a field or something? So, yeah. Okay, so we're going to say, let's make this field a council asset. All right? So mm -hmm. it's principle again. You notice the mouse has changed to a crosshairs. So you go yeah. to any one corner and just do a click. Drag it down to the bottom. And I'm doing it very quick and dirty, and I'll show you why in a second. All right? So that's very approximate. And I do a double click to show I finished. And now the save button goes all black and I can use it. So I'm going to save it. And the field you've just done, in this case, turns green. In your case, it'll probably turn red. And we'll go into that shortly. because That's known as styling. But now that it's turned, you, it gives you the opportunity over here to add another feature. And in this case, we're only doing just this one. So we'll say, no, thank you. We click on the X. But now, in order to go back and amend this, you just click on it. So I click on it here. It pops up in the left. And on the top left, I've got a pencil, which is what I say I want to edit it. OK? Mm -hmm. So editing means I can now change the drawing. And this is where it gets fun, because you can tidy it up, particularly if you zoom in and get the scale. So you can see I didn't come into this corner. So I'll just grab the corner and say I want to be there. And I'll grab this line here and say, I want to come down the edge of the field. And this border is important. So let's get that to there. And we'll do that to there and this to here. So you see, you can follow all the way around and soon get a great deal of accuracy. And the mm. more you zoom in, the better the accuracy that you can get. So 
uh, again, for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to do everything, but you can see the point. Yeah. The, so it's much easier to do this when you're in edit mode rather than trying to get it right the first time when you're doing it. So do a quick and dirty outline to start with and then come in and tidy it up afterwards. It's much, much better. So, Is there a way for you to make the lines a different colour? That's one thing that I was having trouble absolutely. with. Absolutely. We're going to get into that. So we'll say we've, we've finished now, we'll save that, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is green, and it's green for a reason, because we've got what's called styling in place, and you need to change the styling to meet your requirements. So we're gonna go down to, uh, sorry, come down to the uh, stones. Then come down to the, <laughs> Must be something I'm doing wrong. Come on, guys. Thank you. Whoa, I appear to have frozen. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. You could write a, a whole movie about that. Frozen. Um, well, that side works, but that side doesn't. Let me just do a refresh. See why this is. It's a bit like Microsoft, whenever something breaks, you just start again. <laughs> yeah. So you come down to the asset register, go down to the, still not wanting to move. Why don't you want to move? There we go, all right. Turn on the land register. And now I right click and, oh, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. This is the land register. Remember I said you aren't allowed to make changes to anything. So what you get mm -hmm. is what you've got. Uh, if you want to do land where you do want to make changes, you do that in a parish layer. And we might just as well now show you how to do that because it's obviously what you're, you're thinking you're working on. Yeah. But let me say, let's do, we go into a parish layer when we want to make our own choices, in particular in colours and sizes and, and so forth. So we're going to go into the parish layer. And if there isn't anything already here that you want, you create a new one. So you go up to create and say, I want to add a new layer. Okay. Give it a title saying this is seven oaks again. Now this title is going to fit into this column. It's what you see over here. So you want it to be fairly short and not too cryptic, but you get mm -hmm. the chance on the next one to put in a much bigger layer. So you can type it really easy, right? This is a test. Um, and the idea is, is that when somebody else comes along in six months' time and says, what the heck does Seven Oaks mean? They can then look at their much longer description and say, ah, oh, yes, this is where they were playing around that idiot day. Mm -hmm. uh, but the most important thing is up here, the geometry type. So you can have one geometry type per layer, and the choices are point or line or polygon. And they're self-expansion, really. Points are things like, Benches, bus stops, street lights. Were you mentioning street lights earlier to me? Um, um, lines, I don't think so. Walls, footpaths, pavements, um, and polygons is everything else, any area or building. And for today's purposes, mm -hmm. we'll just select polygon. All right, so we go on to the next layer. It says, okay, what columns of data do you want to store? And to get a new column up, you click on the plus sign. OK, and it automatically calls each new column name and you need to change uh, all of them except one because you can't have more than one name. Uh, so if we just say this is um, a type, you can say I want another one. It's called uh, date. We might make that a date field just out of interest. And then we'll have another one and we'll call it um, Let's just say for argument's sake, value. Anything else you want to restore? Uh, um, so what's funny is you can set um, what are called drop-down values. So if you want, rather than people just saying different types of area, whatever comes into their head, you know, field, grass, mown, or whatever, you can put in here a list of what's allowed. So if I click on the plus, you can say grass, and you can add another one and say, 
flower beds. Or you can click on another one and say concrete, whatever it happens to be. And you can see, but that list now means that whenever anyone fills in this area, they have to flee in one of the drop down items. And mm -hmm. as before, you don't have to get this list perfect now, or you can always change it later. So let me just say for today's purposes, we finished now. So I've, I've clicked on the finish button and there's nothing to show. Uh, and you have no idea that you've achieved anything. <laughs> so so <laughs> you control your layers, you come up here to the little cogwheel in the top right and click on it and you get administration. And it's now saying over here, my layers and nothing happens. And you have to wait because we're downloading it from the internet again. And mm -hmm. the internet over here operates at the speed of Somerset snails. So it's not very fast. And they always add the latest layer you've added to the bottom. So we're going to have to scroll down to find Seven Oaks. But because you and I are going to be playing with Seven Oaks quite a lot today, it's handy to move it to the top of the layers. So we click on this little equal sign and we drag it up to the top. And we're just moving Seven Oaks until it's at the top. And then we say we're fine. We're happy with that. We'll sign off, save, and now go back to maps with the global sign. And if we now yeah. click on parish layers, you'll see that your yeah. seven oaks layer pops up at the top. So here is parish layers, there is seven oaks, and I'm now going to add the field or whatever it is you want to do. So we turn it on, and you'll notice it makes no change because we haven't added any data yet. Uh, so what we want to do is right click again and add a feature. Okay, so you'll notice here we, it's popped up with what we uh, put into our columns. It's area type, if I click on the little arrow, I can download. So I'm going to say this one is grass. Notice that there's a plus sign there. So if you want to add something new, this is where you do it. In other words, okay. going back to my statement, it doesn't matter if you don't get it perfect the first time, you can always go back and add or change later. So this is grass, it's going to be today's date. And the value is that wonderful figure of 15,000 uh, pounds. You'll notice we can't save any data yet because we haven't added anything to the map. So let's mm -hmm. scroll into the area that we're going to talk about. Um, let's just say for argument's sake, it's going to be this field here. So I've got my crosshairs, click on the top corner, drag down. Again, just do it quick and dirty for the moment. And I should have double clicked and saved. And now it's come up beautiful red, which is good because it means that you can now play with it. So it was the opportunity up here to add another item, but we didn't bother. So I clicked on X to close it. And now to get back into here, you just click on it. And up it pops here. We're in Seven Oaks there. And this is our record. And now you want to make some changes here. So you say, I'm going to click on the pencil. And I'm going to go into here. And let's just increase the scale a bit so we can go back to seeing if we've got the borders in the right place. Whoops, but it wasn't bad drawing, was it really? Yeah, really, <laughs> really close. Yeah, thank you. We got that there, we got a bit off stray here. And there's a nice little curve here. So we'll just follow around. Bit. That'll do. So now we saved. So now you say to me, who wants a red field? So we're now going to go into what's called styling. Go back into the Seven Oaks layer, right click anywhere in it, bring up that little menu, and we click on style. Now you've got a field of a picture here of, of four columns. So style options, labels, patterns, and the preview. The preview is really useful because it tells you what you've managed to do. So over here, if you want to make uh, the color change according to something, you go from a single, you click on here and you say, I want this to be class based. And then it says, what do you want to class the color on? And you will say on the area type, but you could have chosen the date or the value, but we're going to stick with area type at the moment. <laughs> so then say, do we want to label this? And we say, yes, please. So what's the label going to be uh, based on? And we should have put a name in there, shouldn't we? But we're going to, again, put the label based on area type. 
So over here, this is where you can change the color and the style of the coloring. So grass, let's make it green. So I'm clicking on the red and up comes a color scale. And we say, I want my grass to be that color. So they save that and it's changed. Then the flower beds are going to be bright yellow because they're pretty. Um, and concrete is going to stay that dull color. <laughs> and notice over here that it now shows you what color you're going to get. And also it shows you the area type as the label. You get the mm -hmm. chance to change the label. If you think the label should be a bit bigger, come into the label column and make it a bit bigger. You'll notice it changes in the preview as you do it. Then the text color, you can say, actually, I think I prefer purple as the text color. So look at that purple. Then you can choose what font you want. Um, and the halo is fun. I want a halo. Let's make it um, orangey. And it, you now get a halo around your text. And you say, that's not big enough. I want it to really stand out. So let's make it bigger. There we go. <laughs> Uh, and that'll do for the moment. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't want this dull, dull block of color. You want to put in some um, various changes. So let's have a uh, vertical line. And there you get the patterns there, you see? And you can mm -hmm. change, let's say the thickness should be, uh, the, the lines actually, you don't want them black. We want them this beautiful pink. And we don't want them to be one, we want them to be quite wide like that. And so and so it goes. You can make all the changes you like. When you're happy, you can click on save. And uh, it says we're saved. And now we've come back and look. Oh, that is so. Isn't that egg good? <laughs> it <laughs> uh, <laughs> makes your is, eyes hurt. <laughs> if, if you, now, here's the clever bit, all right? If you say this isn't grass, this is concrete, you come into here. You click on the record, sorry, go into Seven Oaks. You say, I want to edit it. Um, it isn't an area type of grass, it's an area type of concrete. And you click on save. And guess what? It's changed color and pattern. So you can do that all over your map with different things. So it's crystal clear visually where, where your flower beds are, where your mown grass is, where your concrete is, whatever it happens to be. And you can style any of the fields, any of the columns that you put in, you can choose. Now, if it's more important to you to know which is the most valuable piece of land, style on value. And they'll all come up in different colors. Green is really rich and uh, red. There isn't any red in Seven Oaks because nobody's poor in Seven Oaks. So there you go. <clears throat> I'm poor. <laughs> oh, this is recorded. <laughs> right. So, so am I right done, in... Am I right in thinking that um, if I'm wanting to play around and make like a red line drawing or something for a planning application, that I would do it on the um, parish layer? And then if I'm doing something for um, HM land registry and I'm like, okay, I know that this is in our name, I'd go on the asset register and add it to that. Right, yes. Um, you can do both, of course. There's no reason at all why you shouldn't have an entry in the asset register covering this particular plot of land. And then when you want to show people what's going on, you turn on both. You turn on the asset register and you turn on uh, the parish layer for Seven Oaks and off you go. So yeah. you can do multiple layers on top of one another. Mm -hmm. It's very, very convenient to do that. So you can mix and match the asset register with um, the layers that you've created to show both. So that when you click on here, so let me just close this down. If I click here now, it comes up and says, I can either look at the Seven Oaks layer or the Parish layer. But if you'd also turned on your asset register, it would give you the choice of asset register as well. So that you can uh, know whether you want to go into the detail, the database that's in the asset register or the one that's in your Seven Oaks layer. Okay. Have I made that clear? Yes. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. That's good. All right. So what we've done is we've shown you how to create a layer. We've shown you how to add a feature to it. We've shown you how to style the layer. Um, that's probably as much as you need to. Oh, no, there's a major error in my ways. <laughs> so if you need help, come up to the cogwheel at the top. 
go down to help and support and up pops this and then you can just say i want to know how to edit so you type in edit and here it tells you everything you need to know and these are actually great bits of help all right so you get a little video that tells you how to do it or if you're a sort of person that needs a guidance you want to go through it step by step it takes you through it step by step okay it really is a really helpful little system if you get stuck you can say i need to open a ticket and uh the people that run the tickets are really i mean i think geosphere the company behind all this they made a huge mistake they made the people who look after the tickets helpful cooperative nice <laughs> peaceful. They, they got it all mixed up they really did never mind so uh this is one of those few places where if you open a support ticket you probably get an answer within an hour I mean, many yeah. places, it the land registry say we'll get back to you in the next four mm -hmm. days. But these people are very good. They get back to you. Again, it's a really business mistake. They, these people got it all wrong. <laughs> so um, that was uh, the, the support area. Let me just, do you know about the user group? Um, I don't. Uh, Is that... Let Where me just mention it to you. So if you go yeah. into uh, what's called the Parish Online user group, which is just parishonlineusergroup.com, it comes up with a little website which uh, lists, for instance, all the videos from Parish Online. Uh, I, uh, I did this yesterday and it refused to show it. It is very good. There we go. It is loading. There we go. And it, I, what we've done is put in the time. So if you know you've got a minute or two spare you can choose the short ones but if you've got an hour to waste then you can choose the longer ones but there's all the topics here that they do the videos on they're very good that's great uh, so that's there in that user group the other big thing of the user group is the banter session so friday afternoons um <laughs> oh, they're literally called banter sessions. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Well, the, the idea is that there's a group of the usual suspects sits there waiting, begging, hoping, pleading for somebody to call. And you can just come in and say, you know what, I'm really stuck on this particular issue. And they'll go, uh -huh, I can't help you there, bad luck. Or they'll say, ah, we can show you that. And they'll <laughs> show it to you right there and then. Um, and because these people are all parish councillors or parish clerks themselves who've got years and years of experience in parish online. Um, while they're waiting for someone to ask the question, they're generally bantering about with each other. But it turns out to be really, really helpful because you've got all those years of experience of people who've done nothing else but be parish clerks or be parish councillors. Mm -hmm. And they're really helpful and they're very up to date. So in Somerset, for instance, we're going um, to become a unitary going from county council to unitary, and there's all sorts of headaches and things there. And the banter sessions here are really helpful ways of, so, so where do we go for information now? And you'll find that somebody's already done it. Or if someone comes in from Seven Oaks and say, I have got no idea how I can make this tree an oak or other other than an elm, and they'll say, oh, I'll do this. So there are a great bunch of people, I know, because I'm one of them. Uh, I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> and uh but it's it's a, it's a free zoom session every friday three o'clock to four o'clock just pop in whenever you feel like it and ask a question um and then what else does the user group do for you um all these things there are some these are quite cute actually the video help for somerset layers they're particularly about information that the somerset county council puts out to those of us in somerset so you can't see the data but the videos are really good because they, they're only about a minute long and they show you how to do the sorts of things that you need to do to sort of get details on gritting roots or something. So you guys are in Kent, Seven Oaks, Kent? Yes. Yes. So if you go back to Parish Online, which is there, down here, you'll notice that we've got Somerset County Council. So you may well have a Kent County Council. And here... There are the layers of data mm -hmm. that get put out for us by our council. And a bit further down below are the ones down by the district council. So that's South Somerset for me. And then we've got Somerset Heritage. And when we started, there was none of this. It didn't exist. And we got hold of the county council and said, you know, we're really interested in some of the data that you carry. 
And they say, like what? And we said, well, what do you got? And they said, well, we, <laughs> you find this weird to believe. They said, we don't know. There's nobody in the county council who has an oversight of everything they do. They're all broken up into little silos. No mm. one talks to each other. <laughs> and, but what we did was, and here's a clue for you, if it helps. Whatever happens, don't talk to anybody in IT or in the global, sorry, the Geographic Information System, GIS department, because they're very interested in the details. What you're interested in is in service. So there will be somebody in your county council. Is Kent a unitary or a county still? County, I think. Your county. Yeah, so in your county council, there'll be somebody with the name of something like customer experience director or uh, chief um, customer service person. And they're the ones who are charged with helping you get the information that get, and they will throw up their hands in horror and say, you can't see all your grid bins. Well, we will help you there. And they get on to the GIS department and say, these guys must have the details of their grid bins. And so off you go. And it's quite useful. So we get the public rights of way, which are all the footpaths. That's so the only thing we have. You do have that. Okay. That's the only thing we have under Kent County okay. data so sharing. What you need to do is to go back to them and say, Oi, how come Somerset <laughs> know where the primary school catchment areas, they know where all the salt bins are, they know where all the gullies are that you lose cars in. Um, and it's really helpful to know where the pitting routes are in midwinter. Ooh. How come you aren't telling us? But don't go to the IT department, all right? You want to go to the customer service people, the people who are there, whose job it is to make sure that the county council is providing the service that you in the parishes want or, or in the towns. That's really helpful. Although Kent County Council never talked to me. <laughs> well, I know, I know, because you, it's you've, so got hard to get find, hold of. you've got to find the person whose job it is to make sure they are talking to you. And there will be somebody. I'm sure there'll be somebody who's got a, a title like customer experience officer or um, client services or something like that. And they're the ones who are charged with getting right. If all else fails, you can fall back on the legislation. All right. Councils are very keen to forget that there's a law that says you are bound to provide the information that your parishes want. Now, they all... They all like to forget that piece of information, but there is a law out there that says that. So if you're having zero response from your county council, then start getting heavy and say, do you really want me to talk to the ombudsman? Um, <laughs> all of a sudden, you'll find them falling over yourselves. Now, just to give you examples of this, you can see here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, layers of information from Somerset County Council, which is up from zero this time last year. So we're making progress. But um, there's a, a unitary here called Bath and Northeast Somerset, which is called Baines for short. And Baines decided they did this 10 years ago. They said, look, we are having to keep people on the telephones answering questions from our 350 parish councils about can we have a map of this footpath and, and do you know that this uh, there's a hole in this road here and they said it makes much more sense for us to buy an annual subscription to parish online for every council and we'll give it to them free and we'll tell them we will not answer any more of your questions because you're able to find the answers for yourselves and we will export all of our data. Now, Baines exports 400 layers of data to their parishes. So that just shows what can be done. It's mm. a piece of cake, by the way, for county councils to export data. They don't know it. But Geosphere, the company behind Parish Online, has a tool called XMAP. And they use XMAP um, to convert whatever data the county council has into the format that Parish Online needs it, and they will do it for free. So all you need to do is to say, I want the gullies, I want the gritting routes, and I want the highway lighting. And if you will talk to Parish Online, sorry, to um, XMAP, they will come in and actually extract the data for you. They only need three minutes in your database. They set it all up, 
and then that's it. And it continues to export data from then on. It's brilliant. It doesn't cost the uh, county council anything except the fraction of the time they need to say, yes, you can access here for the next 10 minutes or whatever it is. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Geosphere does all the work. It's fabulous. And I can't understand why everyone isn't doing this. But um, Graham, can I just ask you, uh, just, I mean, I can probably Google it. What, what other sorts of uh, things do you think we might potentially be able to access from our county council? So you've, you've given us what you've got there. Just can you think of other things or? Um, yes. Uh, so what any, the, the one that's the biggest thing is usually the district council. And what you need to know is what land do they own in your area? In other words, are you responsible for mowing it and maintaining it, or are they? And mm. that is one of the biggest things that we've had. Um, you get uh, things like uh, traffic islands and uh, road calming measures. Who owns it? Do you own it, or does the highway department? So all that sort mm. of stuff. Ownership is, clear, is key because, of course, with ownership comes responsibility. If you own it, yeah. you have to look after it. And if you don't know that you own it, you're in deep trouble. Mm -hmm. So that's all that sort of stuff about ownership, about um, we were looking at what else did we, we made up a list. I'll send you a list of the 20 top layers that we wanted. <laughs> okay, that would be useful. Yeah, you really don't know what you need until somebody tells you. <laughs> exactly right. And, and what we did find with Somerset County Council, I have to be fair to them here, it was really a matter of education. Once they realized that they were sitting on information that we wanted, they were, couldn't stop themselves from presenting it to us. They, were, they turned from being absolute monsters to being real mountains of, of cooperation and helpfulness. It was extraordinary. You information you didn't they, even want. They just, all they knew was that people kept calling up and asking these irritating questions. And when we said, actually, no, there is a reason why we're asking these irritating questions. It isn't that we're calling up to just because we think it's a good idea to get you difficult. It's because we need it. We use it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know what it is that you'd say, God, it wouldn't it be nice if we had that? I'll tell you what the biggest thing of the lot, the biggest one of the lot is planning applications. Mm -hmm. Right, because as a parish councillor or and, and help to our parish clerk, I spend I put all of our planning applications into parish online, um, and it takes me about a minute for each one, but at the start it takes a lot longer than that, and because the information is all held by your district council, why did they just export it to us? And it would save you having to enter anything. All the information is there. So if I, for instance, turn on um, our planning applications, well, I can, yeah, we can turn it on. There is, um, do you know about public maps? Does that mean anything to you? All right, well, let me show you. So if I go into our planning applications, 2021 is a bit better because there's more of them. So we'll turn those on. We'll zoom out a bit so we can see them. And you can see, oh, look at all this lot. So that doesn't make much sense. If I zoom in a bit, now you can begin to see each one of these is a planning application. And this guy has got, oh, this is a great example to show you how you pick this. So there's three particular applications that apply to this piece of land. So if I click anywhere here, it pops up and says planning applications. And then it says, which one do you want? So you can select the particular one that you're interested in. And so if I sort of click on here, it pops up and tells me who was the applicant, uh, what was the name of it. Um, and in particular, the really useful thing is the link to the district council page. So if I click on there, you will, I'm sure you'll recognize, oops, how interesting. <laughs> Well, it doesn't usually do this. <laughs> it's the portal from the district council that says mm. click here and it'll tell you all the details, all the plans, all the diagrams. You, you must have something like that with your district council. Yeah, yeah. Did you know um, Hugo Fox do basically what you've done on Parish Online? Is there what, sorry? Hugo Fox. Um, so we subscribe to them. They basically... Um, gave us a like a link for our website um, and it shows all of the planning applications in just our parish 
and then you can and you can do it via map so it's you can see basically what you can see on parish online and you click it and then it tell right. it takes you to well, leave. Is this what you're doing here so if i go back to say the map so here's the map of the, all the area and then i can go in and look at my area so which is um so we'll start up here a little bit yeah here's long sutton so if i expand the map but the, the problem is is it's nothing like as detailed as ours i can't <laughs> can't even see this particular case well, mm. it's up here i suppose so maybe it's that one but is this the sort of thing that you're seeing um well on yeah the, on the district houses? council one but i mean that um hugo fox have like done it so that each different house and everything because you can zoom in on the map and it shows each house that has a planning application and then it color codes them as well so that you know whether or not it's Okay, so they're, um, they're, they're doing what I've done here. Yeah, basically. And then in the, same, in the same thing, you want to learn about any one of these, you just click on the area and an it pops up here. Mm. And then you can filter this and change it and say, well, show me only the ones that are uh, from this year or last year, depending on what you turn on. So I've got one for so every year going back. So suddenly it starts getting a bit busier. If you mm. go out a bit now you can start seeing real numbers the the really one that was interesting is that of course the the general public is interested in this stuff yeah. so you can in in parish online there's a facility for doing what's called a public map and it just says it takes whatever is here and puts it out onto a url that you can then put into a a website or you can just send it to people so if i go take a look at one that we done earlier so if I show you our planning applications uh, with that one, yep. So here's the URL, it's popped up. And now you're looking at what we were looking at earlier. Oh, this, that's the one I did as a diagram. I need to kill that one. And then people can zoom in. And this is in their web browser now. And they can see everything here exactly the same way as if you're inside Parish Online. Mm. And by the same token, when you say, I really want to know more about this, you can click on it and up pops the database. And that links them to the right page on the, the local district council portal. Um, and it tells them when did the parish council consider this and what did they think about it? And we've color coded things so that if they've been approved, they're in green. If they're still awaiting a decision, they're in purple. And if they've been mm -hmm. refused, they're in red. And we've got quite a few of each. And then yeah, they can yeah. say, you can say, um, let me turn on the layers I want. So that's 2021. We can turn off 2021 and turn on 2019. Um, and you can see the difference. Now, they also get the overhead map, which is nice, because if they turn everything off, just say, come back. to They've now just got the overhead map of the local village. They can move around. And again, we just have had to wait for it to fill in, but it will fill in. They can zoom mm -hmm. in or they can zoom out and get the whole area. Uh, public maps are the, about the only part of parish online that's really restricted to your parish. You'll find that I cannot move outside our parish borders with this. Mm. Um, well, again, this is a waste of your time. You don't want to see what's coming down, but public maps is a way of publishing the information that you've put into uh, parish online so that everyone else can see it. And the beauty of it, the thing I really like public maps is that any change that you make in Parish Online is automatically updated to the public map. So you don't need to change it every time you change something, it does it for you. That's great. So we're talking about um, getting information out to people. We really should concentrate on that briefly. So there are several ways of doing it. But the most natural one is to print it. So mm -hmm. when you're ready to say, I want to show this to people, you can click on print. And the system automatically shows you what's going to be covered in the print area. So if this is too big or too small, you can just change it to what you want. 
or you can say actually I want a bigger picture. Let's turn off those parish layers, they're really irritating. You can say <laughs> I want a legend to explain it and I want the north arrow so people can say what's up. And you can put a title here. And again, this is just Seven Oaks again. Uh, and then you print it. And it whirls away to itself for a bit and then says, I'm ready. You click on the ready bit and up pops the picture. Now you can do what you like with this. Up here, you've got your usual download it to a PDF file, or you can just put it onto a piece of paper. So this is both an electronic copy and a paper copy of whatever it else is you're happening to do. You see this legend here, that's quite useful. It's quite detailed. Is that um, what that means? The legend bit, it shows? Yes. Layers. It, oh, it, it okay. explains what every color and style means. Um, and so you can do that. Maybe I should have done explained that to you back in uh, the main thing. If I come out of, come on guys, let me just get up there, please. Thank you. There. So we can do a view and a legend and it comes up and tells you what everything is all the legends that you've chosen to create, which is very helpful. And whilst we're here, let me just show you another really, really useful uh, tip in here, and that's bookmarks, all right? If you notice that, <coughs> if you want to look at any particular thing, you've got to sort of scroll the map, say we're really interested in this thing up here. Mm. You can scroll the map. We've got to get it into that area, and then it's you've got to find it. And then you say, "Now, each time I want to look at this, it would be much quicker if I could just click on the bookmark, and it takes me straight here." So, if I just come out of here now, because that's what twenty-two zero zero five seven. So I've changed that to there. I come into the view bookmarks, and I say, "Show me." Uh, what is it? 22 slash 0057. Maybe the one I haven't got. Was it 57? Yes, there it is. So if I click on it now, it jumps straight to it. And that saves you so much time and trouble. Mm. So I put in a bookmark for every planning application we do and for the things that I'm using most of the time. So just as I give you an example, where are we? I want to look for the, the village hall operations manual. All right. So on our village hall, I've added in all the things that people need to know about the village hall. So the first thing that anyone wants to know in the village hall is what's the Wi-Fi password. So you can click on that and it tells you. All right. That is amazing. Then you say, um, how do I link up the sound system to my daughter's um, iPhone so that when we're playing her birthday party, playlist it just comes out on all the speakers well you can put that into the operations manual and uh, have we got solar panels yes we have so what are they what, what do they do they're all information is here so everything is stuck on the village hall so this is really location-based data mm. um, and i should have mentioned that there is the opportunity to put attachments to any record in um in parish online so here we've got eight attachments so if you want to see what they are, you can just say, so what on earth is a data logging stick? Um, and you, here it is. It's the manual on, on what, this is part of our solar panel system. Mm. So it, everything you can do is in Parish Online. And one of those um, videos that we do is of a, company, a village near here where they run their entire parish council meetings from within Parish Online. Everything is done in here. They store the agenda, they store the minutes. Um, and anytime someone says, well, we want to change the way that notices are put on the, <coughs> the notice boards, they'll bring up a picture of the notice board and say, do you mean this one or do you mean that one? And what's the change? So it's, everything is visual. It's much, much simpler. So mm -hmm. I suggest you, it's a great idea to run your parish council meetings in Parish Online. I think I'd need a few more training. <laughs> well, <clears throat> today is <laughs> frantic yeah. business of just rushing through everything to give you a rough idea. <coughs> there are the training videos and the, the help in the knowledge base within Parish Online that explains all of this to you. Mm. Um, and 
I do run two group training sessions per month where um, anybody can come along and uh, for enough fee to pay for my breakfast to make sure I stay alive that day, um, you can get up to an hour of this sort of training on any particular topic. So next week, for instance, uh, Wednesday morning at 10 or Thursday morning at 3, we're doing the absolute basics in uh, Parish Online. So it'll be a lot of what we've gone through today, but in much better de the detail. And I'll be inviting mm. people to actually do it themselves because there's nothing like learning on the job. Yeah, um, yeah. And then uh, there was one earlier this this month. The first one this month was all about footpaths. How do you put in footpaths? How do you trace them out? How do you change color according to the condition? How do you add in styles and bridges and things like that? Um, we did all that earlier this month. Mm -hmm. So and then you've got a, a sort of an annual subscription to the training session. So uh, you can come to all of those at no extra charge and you can have another session like this on any topic you want whenever you like. That's excellent. I'm just the world's That's best really bargain, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything else that you'd like to cover today? I mean, I know it's all out of rush. That's why we videoed it, so you can come back and go through it in slow time and see. Yeah, yeah. If it makes sense to you later. Um, um, I think it'd be just good to, I think, leave it there and then practice a bit. Um, yes. Um, there is one little point that could be helpful to you. If I go back to the, uh, the user group, yes. If you go to the help system here, this is designed specifically for people starting for the very first time. And what you get is a picture of Parish Online and then every single one of these little menu items is a help system. So if you want to know what on earth create means, it says, well, uh, we're on speed issues today, aren't we? Nearly me. Might be all of the tabs you've got open. <laughs> well, yes, me. There we go. Doesn't want to do it though, does it? But anyway, uh, it pops up with an explanation of how to use it, and it gives you a blow by blow account. So here you mm. get the little mini menu because we've right clicked on footpath features, uh, and this, if you click on the Parish Online logo, it gives you a full record what it would do if it was being friendly um again it's just the difference between the help desk that you get within parish online itself and this one from the user group is that the user group one is aimed at people doing this for the very first time and it's much mm. more pace by pace by pace step by step by step um one last thing that i should point out to you because i think it's really helpful if you go to the actual website for parish online themselves they have a tab called case studies and these are fabulous because they show you what other counties or other councils have done in areas that are of interest to you but they show it exactly how they got there so if you you were talking about street lights or i thought somebody was you can go here and or maybe that links on yes and then they showed you what they wanted to do. And then they said, this is how we did it. And it's a step-by-step -step rollout of anything. So the chances are very high that somebody has already done what it is that you're interested in doing. And if you mm -hmm. find the right case study, um, they break it down into different uh, types. So basically these are all the things that you can do. So grass cutting is an obvious one, You know, contracting out the grass. Um, Come to Dundon, incidentally, oh, that's interesting. I wonder why they're there on the grass cutting, <laughs> because they're the council that uses a parish online to run their council meetings. And uh, <laughs> Come to Dundon is clearly a very lovely place, because first of all, it's Somerset, and, and secondly, I, uh, my family owned a house there for a while. <laughs> so it's a very distinguished place. <laughs> uh, remember the name Come to Dundon is something to be, you know, bowed down to in awe and obeisance um so yes case studies on the parish online website really helpful ways of, of learning what you want to do yeah yeah that's great thank you okay well you're very welcome i will send you a uh, a key a link to this video once i've tidied it up a bit um mm -hmm. well i saw the there's the early bit where um 
uh, I come online and then uh, you and I, uh, Georgie, are exchanging views on what we think of the weather and the world and that sort of thing. Yeah, that's not particularly helpful to you. <laughs> Can you check out the bit where I said that I'm poor? <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, there we go. I've got one really clean question for Beatrix, which is, apart from the hilly countryside, why on earth did you come to England? A wonderful man. Ah, oh, the best reason is a lot. Yes, okay, that's good. Okay. Um, do we, have, if you have any more immediate questions, now is the time. You can always come back. Remember the sessions on Friday afternoons, the banter sessions, well worth coming to. Mm -hmm. um, do, by all means, play around, and if you have issues, just give me a shout. Yeah. Can you remind me when the um, group session is next week? Yes, uh, there is a, let me, sh I'll, I'll email you the login. The okay, link. great. Thank you. Details. Yes, because I think you might enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, it's been lovely to talk to you. Thank you. Yeah, so nice to meet you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for your time. See you Take soon. care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.